today is actually my son's birthday, so we are going to hang out together after that. Just hanging out. That's a good night though. Honestly, the older I get, the more I just enjoy hanging out. <laughs> Hi, Sherry from Florida. Well, welcome. Thank you for coming. We're gonna go ahead and get started here pretty quick. Um, we'll give maybe a couple more. If you're on, please don't be shy. Oh, I will tell him happy birthday. He's 24. 24 years ago, I became a mom. So good day, very good day. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and switch the view. So today what we are going to be using is the Holly die. And this is great for um, just making simple and quick cards. You cut this out of glitter stock and you are set. And you can get really, um, really detailed if you wanna go ahead and replace all of the dies, or I mean the die cut pieces. Um, but I honestly am not really likely to do that. <laughs> not at least not every little one because there's lots of little guys in there. But I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can use this die. So tonight we are going to use it to emboss and we're going to cut it out. So I'm just going to bring my, my die cut machine up here, which you know is not normal for me. I usually don't die cut on camera just because it's big and bulky and I don't have that much space on my table. It's always full of everything I'm working on. So let's go ahead and die cut that. And I know my table's shaking. That's probably the other reason why I don't do it is because I know it kind of shakes the camera. And I didn't tape it. I usually tape my dies down just to make sure they don't shift while they're going through but I didn't so hopefully hopefully we're good looks like we are um I just want to make sure it cut all the way on these uh sometimes I know because I know that usually the rollers are on the sides so you kind of have to watch the middles of your I'm gonna go through one more time just to be safe thanks um Let's do it this way. Let's see if that helps. I just want to make sure the middle cut all the way through. Yes. Okay. So we just cut that out like normal. How, how you use, um, how you would typically use your die cut machine and your die. And then you can see it's got all of these little bits. But these are great to use for embellishments. Um, look at these cute little leaves. You've got the little holly leaves and then you've got these little guys. They're still stuck in my die, but I will pull some out just one second. I've got a couple loose right here. You've also got um, these little guys, which are great for embellishments or if you want to use them for shakers. I just think they're cute. They're a cute little shape. So I say those are probably worth holding on to if you want something to use for your shaker cards or just to put around your card. And I'm just kind of cleaning out my die here for a second. Bear with me. I should have brought my up. Hang on one sec. I'm just need to use the die again so I just want to I used to have a little tool that would um that would get all of the little things left in there confetti. yes that would be really cute for confetti nice holiday confetti I love that idea okay so most machines have other sandwiches either in their instructions guide or whatever um I was just following the sandwich for embossing a cut shape so we're going to use our die, and we're, it's important that you put it face up so the cut side is up. Otherwise, you will damage your um, base, and also it will likely cut through your paper. So you want to put your paper on top of your die, and then the next part for this machine is the rubber mat. I'm just gonna try not to shift my 
<coughs> die and paper. And then I've got this embossing plate. So let's put that through. Okay. And I think depending on the paper you use also would uh, definitely have some, there's my dog saying hello as he squeaks his toy. Oh, it did shift. We might have to do that again. Hang on one sec. Let me see if this will work. But it cut off some of my, let me see. What we're going to do is we're going to use one right on top of the other. I just gotta make sure it's going the right way. I gotta see if it'll line up enough without showing the side. Yeah, it's gonna show through. So I've gotta do that one more time. Who did? Amy. Hi, Amy. Never said hi again. Hi again. <laughs> okay, so it looks like the tricky part for this is just gonna be getting it to stay in the right spot on our plate. And I'm hesitant to put tape on it just because I don't want it to, the, sometimes the tape will leave a mark, but we'll see. I think it'll be okay and I'll just put it on the corners just so we don't have the same problem again. So. I think we are pretty well set there. And I used Perfect Blend paper, and it's a little bit lighter weight. Um, if you were to use like Not Your Mama's, it would probably emboss um, just fine, but it might not be as deep of an emboss. But mine is a very deep emboss to the point where some of the paper, um, I'll show you in just a second, but it um, kind of poked through a little bit, but it doesn't really matter, and you'll see why when I show you what we're doing. All right, yeah, that looks, that looks better. So let me move all of that out of the way. Donna said hi. Hi, Donna, how are you? Donna said hi. Hello, Donna. So we just um, used the embossing uh, <laughs> plate and, um, sandwich for our die cut machine to use. Jerry says hi. Carrie? Jerry. Jerry. Hi, Jerry. How are you? Okay, so you can see that it made it possible so that we can cut it. We're using our embossing sandwich um, for our embossing machine. We can emboss it. And so we're going to use both on the same card. I just need to poke through some of these little, some of these little extras. Okay, so this is all poked through. We're ready to um, see what it will kind of look like. So we've got this one that's, I mean, you can see it's a really deep emboss. In fact, I kind of like this side just by itself, but we're going to use this side today and we're going to use this as an overlay. So I thought it would be fun because I like color and I have a hard time. I think simple cards are beautiful when other people make them, but I have a hard time disciplining myself to just let it go and let it be simple because I just have so much fun. Okay, so I wanna show you a couple of things. So on the bottom of this, this is what we're going to end up doing right now. Um, we're going to take our ink and we're going to do all of the little holly berries. And these ones down here were done with ink. And we're not actually going to do that today, but this is what it looks like if you just ink it up. These up here are done in kind of a more watercolor uh, style because I used distress crayons and water. So you can see it kind of poked through a little bit, but it's not gonna matter. You're not gonna be able to tell. And so we're gonna go ahead and grab our crayons. And we are going to use, this set is 
called set two. So we're going to use the red and the green out of set two. And all of the crayons actually have the names of the, the they, co they coordinate with the ink. So this is Barn Door. This is Twisted Citron. And so these pencils are just made up of pure pigment. So how awesome is that? And this is Pilled Paint. Was that the one I wanted to use? No, that's not the one I wanted to use. Who loves these? Debra, have you, have you been playing with them? They are so much fun. This one is called Rustic Wilderness. That's the one I was looking for. So we're going to use those three. And these are watercolor pencils. Now you can color with them just like a pencil. Um, I'll just show you really quick. I've just got a little piece of scrap paper. Jerry asked, they come in those cute cases. They do, Jerry. They do. And one thing that Christopher pointed out that I will echo is just that it's nice they don't have a hinge so that you can just, you know, take up less real estate on your table or wherever. And so it makes that nice. And Christopher did a whole demo on these. Um, so you can see just how they work. So I'll do that one. That's just coloring it. And then let's do this one with, um, we'll put some water with this and you can kind of see how they react. I said I was going to use this one, but I'm actually not going to use the red. We're going to use the ink for that part. All right, so this is my kind of ugly water bottle. It used to be a squeaky clean, but I peeled off the label, which I should have just left the, the label on it. But So it's kind of ugly, but it works. It's the perfect mister. So you can see when you add just a little bit of water that you can watercolor with it, and you can see how pretty that is. Isn't that a pretty color? Now, I am no watercolor expert. I will tell you that right now. But for what we're doing today, it'll be all right. I feel like uh, I have at least enough know-how to do that. <laughs> Which means it's very simple. So if you are intimidated by watercolor, you should like this. So let's do first, let's, let's do the watercolor. Well, yeah, let's do the watercolor second. Let me just wipe up that water just because if I don't, I will lay the paper in it because that's just how I roll. <laughs> so I'm just going to use one of these little detail, what are they called, Darren? Detail inkers, de detail blenders. They're called, Detail blending tools, and these are also by Ranger, as well as the, the ink is um, Simon Hurley ink. So we're just kind of having a Ranger day. The dye is Brutus Monroe, and the paper is Brutus Monroe. Darren will put up a link, bless his heart. Thank you so much, Darren, for your help, as always. Um, the link that he'll put up will show everything that we use. So I honestly am not too, I like this um, technique because I don't have to be too fussy because you really won't see a whole lot. So we're just gonna do all those little holly berries. Deborah said she would buy the pencil. She's seen several devils lately in her chart. Is she gonna buy them? You know what, Deborah? These are really fun. I think they're really user friendly. Um, and also one nice thing that Burgess Monroe offers, I don't know what you had in mind, but um, for me, I want, I knew I wanted all the sets. I knew they were gonna sell out right away. But you know, money's tight sometimes, so. I did afterpay, and that really helped me out. Okay, afterpay, um, just in case you haven't heard of afterpay, anybody who's listening, um, afterpay makes it easy because you can break it down into payments. It's like four payments. Okay. So now... We're getting there on those berries. Amy says she loves that dye. She might have to get one. Amy, isn't it pretty? I love it too. I think it's just got a gorgeous, gorgeous design to it. And I was having a hard time deciding if I wanted to use the ink for the leaves or the 
distress pencil, but I liked the kind of vintagey look that that I got with the pencil. The kind of watercolor just kind of softened it a little bit. It was something different for me. So it was kind of fun to try something new. Did I get all the berries, guys? I think I did. Okay, I think I got all the berries. So now I'm actually going to take, this is game over. This is bee sting. This is just a little bit darker red, so I just wanna just do one berry, just to kind of give it a little bit of variance, just for fun. I'm not spending a lot of time doing it. Okay, so now our berries are all colored. We can start playing with our crayon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this light green, this citron, twisted citron for the leaves. And I'm just doing kind of a quick, like I said, you don't have to be super precise. And um, that makes it nice because it's just a little faster to do it. And I actually think the embossing helps a little bit to get the color on there a little quicker because it rough roughs the paper up a little bit. So the pigment comes off a little bit more easily especially for a lighter color like this. I don't have to do coat after coat. Now I should show you, I'll show you after I do a few more of these. I just don't want them all to be in the same section. Let me do a few down here. I am going to add it. I am going to add the rustic wilderness. The leaves will mostly, the, the holly leaves will, will probably be lighter, which I know is not really traditional but I will be using the Rustic Wilderness in this card too. Okay, so another thing I wanted to show you, and actually maybe I should show you on this just in case it looks a lot different, which I don't know why it would, but that's just it as I don't know. So I'm just gonna get some of my water and I'm going to grab my brush. And can you see this? I have my, yeah, I think you can. Okay, so I'm just going to actually use my brush on the crayon. You can actually make a pool of color, just kind of flicking it off of the cray the pencil. I keep calling them crayons because they kind of look more like crayons. Um, let's see what that does. Iced spruce is pretty. I agree. And also. I agree. That would look pretty. So it does give you a slightly different look from what I'm seeing. It might actually be easier. I'm kind of regretting how I did the others. Maybe we'll just have to... Let's see what we do here. Let's use a little on the ones we've already done. I think this is a faster technique too. So you can use it like a pencil if you want, or you can uh, pull it more like a watercolor, um, just a pile of watercolor paint. Do you ever have those days where you just aren't articulating the way you want to? <laughs> I feel like I'm not articulating as well as I'd like. Every day. <laughs> Every day. You articulate just fine, Darren. Okay. So these, let's see what happens oh, on the ones that are every day too. Every day too. <laughs> Mary said words are hard. They can be. They can be, Mary. <laughs> words can be hard. Okay, let's try one of these that we haven't done and see if it's a lot different. I just don't want to. Donna said hi. Hi, Donna. We got all the Donnas. <laughs> the Donner party. <laughs> Donna party, I mean. Kelly says hi. She says, Tori's late. Hi, Kelly. Thanks for joining us. We embossed our... What was that? Amy said you can also dip the pencils into water before coloring paper. Oh, 
Oh, I haven't tried that. We'll have to try that on the other one. You know, I think that uh, watercolor pencils are a good medium for me and that I, I feel like you get a little more control with them, which is my issue with watercolor because I just have a hard time knowing how loose is good and you know what I mean? Um, my favorite medium is probably regular colored pencils, but I like playing with everything. And I think it's good to break out of your norm from time to time. Yeah, this is, this is happening much better. So let's, let's try that out really quick. So you, if you dip your pencil into the water and then color, you get a much deeper color. If you're going for a deeper more uh, color, more vibrancy, that is the way to get there. See how much different that is. Thank you for the tip. Good Appreciate that, Amy. <coughs> All right, I think we need just a little bit more water. And I think that's where I struggle with watercolors. I have a really hard time gauging how much water. So I, I tend to go easy on the water because if I don't, it seems like I go really heavy on the water. But this seems a little too heavy now. Let's, let's do some of just straight water so we can kind of dilute that a little bit, move that around a little bit. We want to add just a little bit more on some of these. I don't want it to be too even of color. I like it to be kind of, I don't know what the word is. I guess it is loose still. <laughs> This is just really therapeutic too. This, I mean, really, this is, this is like no fail. Seriously, it's really an easy way because you've got all those grooves that hold your, your colors where you want them to be. So you can't go too far astray. And then even if you do, because there's an overlay on top, you're all good. So seriously, if you want to practice watercoloring, if you're not really comfortable with it, this is a great way to start um, playing with something. If you're afraid of like just wasting your product or whatever, then this is a good way to start. So usually I don't, um, I know a lot of people do use the, the, um, perfect blend, like perfect blend is made more for like watercolor, not watercolor, but, um, alcohol markers and because it is a lighter weight, but for something where you're not using a lot of water, it's not bad. I was kind of not sure what it would do, but it's, I think it's working just fine. And again, I wanted those deep, I wanted a deep emboss on this so that it would keep me out of trouble. Okay, so we've got our base color down. We can put a little bit more, um, let's use our uh, Rustic Wilderness now. Now, if you want to, you can do an in-between color because we've got all this this still here. So we could kind of do, mix the two together and kind of get an in-betweener color. Add a little bit more water. In an in-betweener. It's a very technical term. Okay, so again, I just wanna add some more, just, it just, it reminds me of just something that you'd find in like your grandma's linen closet or something that she's Donna been using for years. What, what was that? Donna said very pretty. Oh, thanks, Donna. Okay, so now we've got that in between our color kind of laid down. And like I said, I'm just doing this really rough and rapid. So now I feel like, um, I feel like we need a little bit more on that leaf. Okay, so now let's do a deeper one. Let's just go with Let's wipe this up, actually, because it's bugging me. I just don't like having all that water around. Because I know me. <laughs> Anything that 
could go crazy will go crazy, especially when I'm live. So we're going to go ahead and let's try the um, dipping the, the pencil in to get a little bit of that on there. Now I'm just going to dot this on for now because this isn't a very wide part of the design. So I'm just getting kind of the little bulbs at the end. I don't know what else to call them. It kind of looks like a pine, but it's it's rounded. So I'm not really sure what it is, but I like it. It's cute. Um, is that all the little pine boughs? Or whatever we're going to call it. That's what I'm going to call it. We'll say that one's one. I think I missed a bit of holly right there. Okay. Oh, you know what? I missed some over here too. Slacker. Good thing there was still stuff in my brush, huh? Because I cleaned up all of the, the paint. Okay. Or whatever we're calling it. The pigment. So now that we've got that laid down, we can kind of move that around. But it looks like it would be better to get some more color in there. Let's, let's move it around with some looser, wetter color. And again, if you go over the lines, whatever, that's okay. That overlay is gonna cover up a bunch of stuff. And I'm just gonna leave, I think the little ones, the little cute little, I don't know what these are, but the ones that are just shorter, they look like this. I think I'll just leave those white. Amy says buds? Question mark. Yeah, I guess they are buds. Yeah. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> I told you I I'm struggling with my uh articulating Words today. Are Words are hard today. So yes, feel free to fill in the blanks. <laughs> oh, that was a holly, but that's okay. I actually want to do a little bit on the holly too, just at least go. Now, I think a lot of that's covered, so let's check it out. So, yeah. Some of the insides of the leaves will be covered, so you kind of do want to go over the, little, the lines just a little bit so that you've got kind of that shading in there. but I'm using the lines kind of as my guide. But that's one of the nice things about watercolors. You can kind of see how it dries, see if you like it, and then if you don't, you can do another layer. Okay, so, so far this is where we're at with this. Simple, huh? But this is good too because it kind of shows me where I've got color still. I, I neglected those sides still. And I do want to add a little bit more to our, our pine branches. That's what I'm calling them, like I said. <laughs> Whether or not that's what they are, I don't know. My sister is really just like a natural at watercolor. She amazes me. <coughs> but I figure if I can even... Ooh, that sounds fun. Alcohol inks with foil. So what do you, what do, you do with that? Like, what, what kind of foil are we talking here? Are we talking, like, um, deco foil kind of stuff, or... You color the marker on top of the foil. Do tell. I want to hear about it. I might need to try that. Okay. Well, I can't tell. Let's put a little bit on that. I think that's okay. I think we've got them. I think some of it that I'm seeing is just where the paper is broken. Let's see. When we do this, it'll probably help us see if we need to add anything more. 
Oh, I like that. Isn't that just cheery? It just makes me happy. I think we could even use just a little bit darker, a little bit more of the dark in the center, just, just to ground it down a little bit more. I do want a little bit of water though. Oh, thank you, Donna. Oh, wow, that's a game changer. You you put the alcohol ink on, and just before it dries, you use your deco foil. That, okay, that's something to try out over the weekend. Deborah said she's better at color pencil with the Amazon. So I have two sets of watercolor pencils, so I've been practicing. But oh, that's awesome. Ooh, fun. Yeah, I definitely like the pencil over just loose most of the time, but I don't know. I play with all of it a little bit. I actually really enjoy watercoloring with the uh, Chroma Mist sprays. Have you ever tried those? I think just because this, they are just so vivid and pretty anyway, um, I don't do it like a ton, but I do enjoy it when I do. All right, that one I was a little heavy handed on. What was that? Oh, thank you so much. I hope I didn't just kill it with that last one, but I think I think it'll dry a little lighter, so we'll probably be okay. Yep, I think now is the time to look at it and say, okay, probably okay now. However, if you're really good, you probably could get in there, but I'm not going to try that because I'm not skilled like that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to be... I think that's going to be where we leave that. Okay, so now we can move on to finishing our card. So you could do a couple of things. If you wanted to put clear um, acetate behind it, you could do a shaker card. But with this, with all of the color and everything, I don't know that I would because I think it would compete with your little holly berries. But um, you could also, another thing you could do is if you wanted to add a little more depth, you could put it on foam squares, but I don't want to. I want it to lay flat against it. I'm going to try it out. I am definitely, that's on my to-do list this weekend. I'm going to have to try that out. I have only got like, now I got to count them. I only have like five colors, but hey, five colors is enough to play with, huh? Okay, I changed bottles. I usually use the smaller Barely Art glue, so I have to kind of learn the um, how heavy. Ooh, it comes out so fast in this bottle because it's like more gravity or something because the bottle is full. I'll have to check her out. I, I believe I've seen a few of hers. Um, I... Yeah, I, I've seen a few of her videos, and she's really awesome. Um, I love to watch other crafters' videos. I just think there's so much wealth in everybody's, even just sometimes, even if it's a technique you already know, just the way people do things, sometimes they have a little tip that you don't know or something that makes things easier or something you've just never thought about trying with something that you've used a million times. I, I think it's great. I think we live in a day and age that we are really blessed that we can just have so much information at our fingertips. I think it's amazing. Darren and I try to explain to our kids what it was like to make a book report growing up about, or not a book report, but just reports where you do like the whole en encyclopedia and all of that jazz. <laughs> and they just don't have any idea how good they have it. <laughs> and our encyclopedias, I was, I'm the youngest of five kids. So by the time I was making them, my oldest brother is like 12 years older than me. So those encyclopedias, they were not new. They were not, <laughs> not current at all. Okay. So I'm going to, I, I was trying to decide because the plate is exactly the size of a card front. And I tend to, if you've watched me at all, you know, I like to map my cards. And so I thought it might be fun 
to just use a full card. So I made the mat. The mat is, um, the card is the four and a quarter at, by five and a half. And so this is four and a half by five and three quarters. Words are hard and math can be hard too. <laughs> but mostly when it's, it's because I'm live. Yeah, every, you know, that's one of the things, yeah, everybody has, I, I love even just when you go to a crop or something and just talking to people that, you know, are right there. I just think there is a wealth to share with each other. And I love that crafters are usually really great about sharing tips and tricks and all those crafty secrets. All right, so let's get that centered on there as best we can. And that is going to work for me. And then I'm going to line that up on a piece of, is this, this is five and three quarters by five and three quarters because we are actually going to also add it to a six by six card base. So well, let's do the same thing on this. Now, if you have not ever used them, I have to tell you, I always have to do a little plug for these because I love them so much. The Brutus Monroe um, pre-cut, pre-scored card bases are just, they are just convenient. They are just nice to have. And I struggle to cut in a straight line anyway, so it's nice to have it all done for me. And I don't have to worry about the hard math either. <laughs> Okay, I just want to make sure I have it on there lined up without any, I guess it won't matter too much, but oh, I still did it, but that's okay because the card base is white, so it makes it not really noticeable. So we're going to go this way. And before we want to adhere that to our card, just because I used a lighter weight card stock, I'm not gonna tie this bow. I'm gonna do the cheat method. Penny said handmade is not perfect. It's a good thing, Penny, because I am so far from perfect. <laughs> okay. And then I'm just going to try to center that. And then one nice thing about the cheat method, it's good if you're making a stack of cards because you will save on um, ribbon. You don't need to take it as far in as I did. I could have just done it right there and right there. But I don't know why I didn't. <laughs> Let's see, before we get it too attached, if it's pretty well, yeah, I think we'll be okay. See, look, it keeps sticking to my finger. Crazy. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and we will add some adhesive to our other side. That adhesive is just not letting go. You know, probably if I just were to cut this instead of rip it, it would also work better. But I was just in a hurry. Thank you, Penny. I appreciate a judgment-free zone for sure. <coughs> for sure. I'm going to just leave that one. We don't really need all of that for the adhesive. I'll take it off of here. We'll try this side. It looks like it might come up easier. And then we'll do this one down here too. Now, if your ribbon is too thick, and we'll judge in just a minute, um, you can use foam instead to pop your card up a little bit so you, you give it a little bit of room in the back. But this is pretty flat against the card. I'm not too worried about it. So I think we'll have it be a side fold card. And... So we've got that set up and ready. 
So now let's embellish it just a little bit. So I took the dies, um, a couple of them from a couple different sets. I'm in love with this scent and I just think it's so cute. So I cut out Joy from the Star of Wonder die set. Love this set, has a ton in it. I did do a video on that if you wanna see more ways to use this. I made like four cards on that video using that set. And then this is one of my very favorite sets of all, just because it has all of these just really useful pieces. And we just used the little label and the little um, scalloped label. So we're going to just add that. And I was okay with the joy kind of sticking out over the top and the bottom. You don't even have to have the label be um, flush on there. I am going to do it that way, but have fun and just experiment. I just realized that this um, <laughs> pattern kind of reminds me, I uh, when I got married, I, uh, well, when Darren and I got married, I should say, because we both got married, um, I received as a gift, my favorite wedding gift was a set of false graph um, winterberry china. And that kind of reminds me of it. And I still try to get a piece if I can every year, whatever we use. We don't have a, a large family, so I don't need too many things, but I like having all the little fun things. Okay, so let's put that, I'm gonna put it up about right there. I'm trying to make sure my ribbon stays fairly straight. And I did pop that up on some foam. Oh man, I hate when you have to buy those serious purchases instead of craft supplies. <laughs> Dang it, life, real life, huh? <laughs> but yeah, um, so embossing is fun. So this is dry embossing. I know, right? They must not be crafters. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm sure there are plenty of doctors that craft. Um, but yeah, dry, dry embossing. If you have a die cut machine and dies, you can use those for, for embossing, but embossing powder and heat embossing, that's a lot of fun too. Okay, so I kind of got glue everywhere. I didn't realize I struggled with that glue. Well, thankfully that glue dries clear or I would be in big trouble on a number of occasions. Okay, so now for the cheat method, I'm sure you probably have seen this, you've probably done this, but just in case you don't know, I'm gonna get a little bit longer piece. You know what, that's wise. I think that's really wise. Then you don't end up looking at the things that you have and going, <laughs> Oh, I thought that was really cute, but you know, what I buy it for? Crafting on a budget is wise. So I was going to try to have it land right there, but you know what? What I found with bows is they have a mind of their own. And so I try to go with what, it's kind of like my hair. It does what it wants to do. So I just try to work with what it's trying to do. Um, but yeah, I think bows are kind of the same, same situation. So we're just going to have a little, it's kind of cute on the angle anyway. I do want to poof it out just a little bit. I think, uh, Grover Hayden ribbon is a little harder to make fluffy bows with, you know, satin really easy tool is nice but and I love the look of grow green I just have a harder time getting the shape I want with my bows oops Let's see if we got it kind of even I 
And I did grab a rib uh, button, but I don't know. I don't know if it needs it. Let's look and see. I'm thinking we could put a, put a little button on there. Should we add the little button? I think it's kind of cute. Yeah, let's add the button. But I think I have a button that I would rather use that's a little bit more fun. I think we should use this button. Oh, nice. I grabbed a hair at the same time. Um, yep, I like that. Oh, yes. You will love that box. I also bought the SSS Halloween box. Both boxes, yes, I, I can understand that. But I, I have seen what's in that Brutus Monroe Halloween box, and I'm telling you, it's a good one. Okay. Let's see if I can... Time to go to plan B. I have in my craft room. Donna said beautiful card. Oh, thank you, Donna. So these are just those little flossers for uh, bracers, braces, dental flossers. And these are great. If you have a hard time getting things threaded, this is a great inexpensive thing to put in your craft room that will help you. There we go. Now we've got both sides through. But I do need to scooch it back over the loop. Hang on one sec, guys. I do not have dainty hands. <laughs> I am five foot nine, so I definitely am not a dainty person. <laughs> Okay, I think that works. What do you guys think? Let's make the loops just a little bit smaller. See if I can turn it a little bit. You can maneuver it a little bit, but it's still gonna be like the bow as far as kind of doing what it wants to do. So we'll just let it kind of live free. <laughs> all right, so we've got our card all put together and it was really easy. You guys saw how easy this was. Really fun way to use. I love to get more use than one from my scrapbook supplies. So this way you've got your cutting die and you've got an embossing. Um, I'm sure you've tried it with stencils before. You can do the same thing with stencils. You can use those for emb uh, embossing as well. So yeah, let me go ahead and switch my camera view. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope that all of you have fun this weekend. I hope you have fun plans. And if not, I hope you get some good rest. Crafty time is the best though, right? <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. And I will be live again next Friday with, button. what was that? They love the, button. the button was fun, huh? I love finding things in my crafty stash that work. And that just seemed like it needed to go on that card. That's the fun thing too about a six by six card because your six by six card gives you so much real estate to play with. Thank you so much again for, for joining me and I will be back next Friday with a new project and I kind of have some ideas on that. Um, you may see some fall items. We'll see. We'll see. I will see you then and thanks again. Bye-bye. <laughs>